best pieces of advice that you can get about investments are really simple and straightforward. Often, when we think of finance, it can be somewhat a bit overwhelming because there's a lot to think about. You have your savings, your budget, insurances. If you write all this down on an index card, you'll realize that it's not complex at all. You'll realize that it's not that hard. Here is some financial advice that I would like you to write down on an index card. Hi, my name is Manif, and I'm a multiple brick and mortar business owner. I've closed billions of dollars of sales over the last 25 years, and I started this YouTube channel so I can help more people achieve their financial freedom and success goals. And that could also all fit on an index card. So let's get it started. The first thing that I want you to write down on the index card is you need to be able to save at least 20% of your money on savings, while 50 and 30% can be used on essentials that you want. 50% should go to your car loan, your rent, utility bills, and food, you know, basically your living skill, basically your living costs, anything that you need to survive on, while 30% is your spendable money. Now, some people raise that number but most people keep that lower than 30 percent i want you to get in the habit of not punishing yourself but being wise and organized look there's no point in earning money if you're not going to be happy and you're going to be miserable but you don't have to be miserable just because you have a savings plan and emergency fund put away enough now i do get this a lot when people are like i just don't have enough money to save you always have more money to save if you cut out things out of your life that are unnecessary and frivolous so don't give me that uh, crap just go ahead and look at your budget. If you're not making enough, for goodness sake, then go get another job or get a side hustle or grind a little bit longer. But what you need to do is to have enough so that you can feel comfortable. Hey, you wanna go out there and get something? Go ahead and buy it. As long as you've got the other percentages allocated to your savings, your investment, your emergency fund, all of those things are taken care of, whatever you have left over. And then sometimes people give me this, you know, boo-hoo, I don't understand. I've been there, my family's been there. I grew up in poverty, so if you don't have enough left over, over to enjoy like i just said go out there and hustle a little bit more go out there and sell some stuff you have that you've collected go out there and mow lawns flip burgers do whatever needs to be done so you can have a little bit left over sometimes people want to whine but i'm just i'm being truthful and honest it's not to go out and buy someone's system with your last dollars and cents like some of these financial gurus that fly around all over the world to take your money I want you to be able to harness what you already have and utilize it right now. You don't have to buy this super secret magic system. Just go out there and start to save money. The more money you have, the more you can invest later. And that part we'll get into. Now let's talk about beating the market. It's really, really hard to time the market right. So instead of just always buying individual stocks, get into buying some index funds as well. Studies have shown that most people are not really good at picking individual stocks. They let their emotions get in the way or they let what they read about the company or they don't really do a deep dive into the company the founder the product you know they go by more what they hear heck not even warren buffett recommends that you try just single stock picking if the oracle of omaha tells you to pick index funds i think you should follow it i think i should follow it because after all his advice would matter because not everyone has the time to read and speculate which company stocks would rise or even great successful managers from wall street have claimed that some of their stock picks have actually been just sheer luck sometimes to avoid extra risk, just go for the most trusted index funds and hold them for a while. It's as simple as that sometimes. Now this one's a really hard one. If you have a financial advisor, make sure that they can be trusted and follow what we call a fiduciary standard or someone that will work directly for you on your behalf and put your interests above theirs. Because on the other hand, there are investment brokers that will assist you, but only to the extent of their company's broker dealer recommendations. This is what we call suitability standards. A lot of times if you pay for a suitability standard broker, they'll have more fees and they're usually more expensive than some advisor who can work directly with you. Now, depending on how much money you have to spend, you can't get someone to really, really focus on you unless you have a good amount of savings. And instead of going with some broker who's going to charge you a whole ton of fees and only look out for their best interest, the money that you save from all of those fees can in turn also have been used for savings and additional investments. So if you want a financial advisor, it's safer to pick the fiduciary who you can trust, who has sage advice, and who knows what your goals are. 
Now this one's another tricky one. Since most of my businesses are in and around real estate, this one kind of goes against some of the things that you hear about real estate. Buying a home is a huge investment and it'll take a lot of your resources and time. That's why I recommend only getting a house if you're financially ready to do so. You have that down payment, taxes, um, you'll have to maintain that house. And there's a lot that goes into a house that people don't think about. And so if you're not ready financially to being able to afford a house, start to invest that money elsewhere in the stock market. Or, you know, if you study crypto and you know about it and all those things, only buy a house that you can afford as well. Don't stretch out so far it's only you and your dog and you have a five bedroom house. You know, think of some things that are conservative. Buying a house, I believe in home ownership against a lot of other guru type of advisors who say, don't buy a house, buy my shit though. My advice is buy a house before you buy a bunch of toys, but make sure that house you buy is something that you can afford. It's the simplest conversation that I can have with you. Don't overextend yourself. Sure, the house is great, but are you making an emotional purchase? Or are you making a logical one? And if you don't have the money yet, there are plenty of ways to save money and save for a home. You can reduce your everyday expenses. You can buy secondhand products instead of new ones. You can sell the stuff that you have as secondhand products because you really need enough money in your account. Remember, once you have signed on that dotted line for a 15 or 30 year commitment to a mortgage, you're stuck for that time, right? And it's not that liquid where you can sell just at a drop of a dime. It depends on what the market is doing as well. So make sure to reduce all your non-essential expenses first. Save up for that down payment and have enough money for your emergency fund. If you own a house, you'll probably need even more of an emergency fund to begin with. If you want to be financially secure, you also have to think about insurance. Aside from your emergency funds, having an extra cushion on your finances and health should always be welcome. You'll never know when a devastating accident might happen to you. Always have an insurance policy in case you need it for hospital bills or your car or your home or even an untimely and unfortunate death of a loved one, spouse, or somebody else in your family. I recommend getting essentials like home, auto, life insurance, disability insurance, and health insurance. If you add all of these policies, it can be quite pricey, but I can just about tell you that hospital bills can far exceed your savings real quickly. So having the right insurances in place kind of guarantees the fact that you'll still stay afloat. So it's important, pick your insurance provider and your insurances that you need based on your needs right now or a little in the future. You don't have an immediate family per se. You don't need millions of dollars of insurances in place. Just make sure you're amply covered and as your life grows, you grow with your insurances as well. Quick break, I have a book for you that will help you achieve your financial freedom. Click on the link in the description down below and you'll get a copy of my free book. You don't even have to pay anything. This is just my way of helping people out and as a thanks for your continued support of this channel. So good luck on your journey. Last but not least, bring that index card with you. And I emphasize that you have to consistently follow all the pieces of advice that I just gave you. Because these tips may be easy to follow, but if you're inconsistent and can't follow through the plan, then it will all go to waste. Plans are great to have, but it always matters if you execute them. So write these down on an index card, bring it with you, memorize it, put a picture in your phone, and follow these simple, little, small increments of financial advice. Check it every now and then and have reminders stuck up all over the place until you reach your financial goals. And you will so in no time at all if you remember to visit your goals every day. Another thing I want you to write down is to pay it forward and give back to the communities in which you come from. I'm an avid believer that we should share our knowledge with people around us and give back to those who are in need. As someone who grew up in poverty, I know what it's like to have barely enough which is why I created this channel in the first place. So that I can continue to share my knowledge and give back to the community, hopefully there's a person out there who can avoid some of the missteps that I've had. You can also pay this forward by helping me share this video so that my team and I can reach out to more people. Don't forget to click that like and subscribe button so that you'll get notified when I come out with something new. Thank you for watching and if you wanna learn more about personal finance, check out this video, How I Overcome Financial Panic When Inflation Rises.